All right, this video is going to cover integer concepts. Now, in order to work with integers and understand them, you really need to remember what it is, and hopefully you do, but just again briefly in case you forgot since a couple lessons ago, an integer is positive and negative numbers. It includes zero. Zero does not have a sign, and it's not fractions or decimals. You could think of them as the old counting numbers and then counting numbers with negatives on it and includes zero. So the graphic that I have on this page here shows it a little bit better. It is, again, the positive integers. I know there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and on, and on, and on, and on. Negative integers are negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and on, and on, and on. And then it includes zero, and zero is neither positive or negative. Now, one of the things, oh, and please notice, too, there's no fractions or decimals that are included here. It's just um, the... The, int, the counting numbers and they're positive or negative and include zero. So, um, one of the things I want you to realize is that all integers have opposites and this shows us really well here that the number three and negative three are opposite of each other. They are um, the same digit but they're on opposite sides of zero. Okay, now some real world examples of integers we have spending and earning money. Now, one of the things I want to mention here are some words that some of you may not have heard before because they come up in word problems and you need to know them. If I mention depositing money in a bank, that's adding it to it or putting it in, so that would be plus. If I said withdrawing money, withdrawal, whoa, 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 what did I do? There, withdrawal, that is taking money out, that is a negative thing, okay? Rising and falling of temperatures. For example, I said, wow, it's 10 degrees warmer than it was this morning. And I wanted you to represent that with uh, an integer. You would say, all right, well, it's plus 10. Okay, and that would represent it. Uh, stock market gains and losses. I said, oh, man, I had a loss of 15% on my stock. Well, you could show that by doing negative 15%. And that would be the way you show it. Gaining and losing yards in a football game. That's another way. That's a perfect example of uses for integers. Now, I also want to mention absolute value because that is a critical thing for you to understand. Um, not so much for this particular unit, but ones that are coming up, you need to understand what this is. You need to remember it. An absolute value is just a distance from zero. Or you can think of it as a number without a sign. These straight bars tell you that you're dealing with absolute value, and then there's some number on the inside, but those straight bars are absolute value. Now, if I had, for example, here, a negative 3, and I put it, that's a 3, in the absolute value bars, you would say the absolute value of negative 3. That's the way you would read it. And what it means is, how far is negative 3 from 0? Well, it's 3. Or you could say it's just the number without a sign. Um, here, if I did 3, which is the opposite, how far is 3 from 0? Well, it's still 3, okay? It's the number without a sign. Do not make the most common student mistake that I see all the time, and that is thinking that um, it's the opposite number. So, in other words, I put there's a negative in there, it turns out positive. There's a positive in there, it turns out being negative. That is a huge mistake, okay? It is the distance from zero or the number without a sign. So you just get rid of the bars and you get rid of the sign and that's it for absolute value. Okay? All right, let's move on. Here, I want you to identify from this list what are integers. So take a look at it, circle the ones, write them down, and then circle the ones that you think are integers. Pause the video. Okay, hopefully you realize that this one is, this one is, this one is, this one is, and this one is. Let's do some comparing. Use gr less than, greater than, or equal to. Now, I put a number line down here because some people like a number line. But here, look at the first problem. We have 11 and negative 10. Well, what you should know right away is that when you have a positive number, versus a negative number, the positive is always bigger. The positive is the biggest. That's really easy. So this one, remember the alligator eats the bigger number. So then we get to the next one, we're like, ooh, negative four, negative eight. Hmm, I don't know what to do with that one. All right, those are two negative numbers. So we have a negative versus a negative. 
negative versus a negative. Okay? Well, you could use a number line. You could go, all right, well, here, here is negative 4, here is negative 8. Sometimes people look at the number line and look, well, I don't know, that doesn't help me either. Well, here, on a number line, on a number line, the number to the right, the right is always the biggest number. biggest number. So looking here, this one is to the right, so negative 4 is the larger number. So how can we write that with our little rules here? Negative versus negative. Here, the smaller digit, the smaller digit is the biggest. Okay? Okay. Next one, I have negative 29, negative 28. Well, our number line does not go that far, but use the little rule that we wrote up here. The smaller digit is the biggest, because they're both negative. 28 is a smaller digit. That's the bigger number. And then the next one, negative 6 and a positive 5. Well, we know that positive is always larger. Okay? Cool. Now let's put some in order, shall we? Order, order. I want to put these integers in order from least to greatest. The most common student mistake with these is doing greatest to least. Pay attention to the directions here. Okay? So, negative numbers are going to be the smallest ones. Well, if you're looking for the smallest, hopefully you do this while the number line, you'd realize that, hey, that would be that one. Negative 3 is small. What's bigger than that, though, is negative 1. Then, good old zero. Then we have a positive one and a positive three. Okay, now you're asked to evaluate, graph, and label each point on a number line. Evaluate just means if there's something to do to the number, do it. And in these, uh, and for these particular points, that would be anything with an absolute value. So remember, these bars here indicate absolute value. Now, remember what absolute value means. Uh, so first thing we're going to do is evaluate each one of these. Point A, it means the number without a sign because it's just a distance from 0. So negative 3 is 3 from 0. Uh, the next one, point B is negative 3. Well, there's nothing to do to that. There's no absolute value symbol, so point B is just negative 3. Point C is 4, a positive 4. Now here you've got to be careful because, again, students tend to think that absolute value means opposite, and that's not the case. It's just the number without a sign, so it's just 4. And then the last one, this is a very tricky one because here you have a negative out in front. So first thing you want to do is say, well, the absolute value of 2 is just 2, and then the negative goes out in front. you got to be very careful with something like that when you have a negative out in front of it. So the absolute value of 2 is just 2, and then the negative goes out in front. If it was a negative 2 inside, well, the absolute value of negative 2 is still 2, and then the negative would be in front, and it would stay negative 2. Okay? Putting them on the number line, point A is 3, so I would go right here, and I'm going to put an A. Point B is negative 3, and I'm going to put B here. Point C is 4, so I'll go here. Now, I'm not going to put it right next to this. I'm going to go up above. You could do that. And then point D is negative 2, and I'm going to put that one up above as well. Okay? That's all, my friends. Goodbye.